Hi, I'm Simon Galbraith, the CEO of Redgate Software. Welcome to SQL in the City 2016. Woo! Well, there's no one cheering back because it's virtual, but hey, you get the picture. Uh, we've got some really great sessions today. We're talking about how our products have been updated and moving forward. We're talking about how that fits in with our customers. We're talking about how that fits in for you. And we're going to introduce a new product called SQL Clone, which we're really, really excited about. Uh, the thing I normally do, though, before I talk about all that sort of thing, is to talk about how we see the world uh, and give you a little picture about how we see the trends in our industry. Uh, so just rolling back a couple of years, 2014, what we spoke about then was database lifecycle management, DLM. Uh, we introduced that term, and that's now become an industry-wide term. Lots of people are talking about it. And the idea is that you have application lifecycle management, which is really a well-understood concept, and we needed something the same, just as important, database lifecycle management, which meant you should be treating the database with exactly the same amount of respect as the application. In fact, in our view, the database deserves more respect because you can't just delete it and start again. You've got to preserve the data that's in there. Uh, and we're proud about that contribution. We think it really did take the industry forward. Then in 2015, what we did was talk a bit more about how we saw the business side of database lifecycle management. So what did that sort of mean? How did you talk about uh, getting value to customers more quickly or preserving the value of your data or avoiding data breaches, the sort of things you hear about in the press with Ashley Manson and other things we mentioned then. Uh, this year, though, uh, we want to talk about something broader again. and We're talking about database DevOps. Uh, so what that is, is on DLM, you've got one side, which is really the development side of a database lifecycle management, how the developers are coping with it. But DevOps, uh, the idea is it's including database lifecycle management, but it's the whole thing. How does the operations see the database? How does the application development side of the business see the database? And uh, we think that DevOps is now sufficiently mainstream and ready that it's worthy of you guys thinking about your database moving into a database, dev, database DevOps type of world. Uh, now, the thing is that there's always been this tension between the development side of the organization. Their job is to get changes to happen. You know, They've got their bosses cracking the whip. Come on, get that feature out, make it happen, make changes, make money. Uh, and on the operations side of the business, you've got something different. You've got protect the data, don't let the company fail, don't do things that could really harm our state. And that tension is tricky because the easiest way to prevent harm is to prevent change. But if we can't change it, we can't get the value. So how do you make those things work together? And what DevOps has done is try to square that circle, bring those things together. And the thing that they've done really is to find, is to redefine what change was. So rather than being this enormous great big thing, it's like how do we make those changes as small as possible, as risk-free as possible, as minute as possible so that each individual change can happen far more easily, far easier to test, far easier to make it work. And that's been an amazing success. Uh, and the evidence I'm going to use now really comes from the State of the DevOps report from Puppet Labs. They, they interviewed 4,500 people in 2016, really asking them about their experiences of DevOps. And they've come up with some really remarkable figures. And the reason I want to talk to you about them is I think it really provides some really strong evidence that you should be taking this properly seriously as a thing you're going to do for your business in the next year. So the first thing is that companies that use DevOps have report a third of the rate of failure as companies uh, making changes do as those are in, say, the waterfall methodology, which is quite a decent change, isn't it? You know, a third less. And the thing I'm not so sure about is, okay, are they changing more often? Is, does it per failure, per change? I don't know. But the People are saying, less failure. We're just getting less failure full stop. And I think that's a really important benefit, and enough, really, to justify it. But luckily, there's some other really huge benefits coming through as well. The next one, which is getting more profound now, is the length of time it takes to recover from that change. And that change, is that's 24 times quicker. So that's really getting pretty serious now. It's more than order of magnitude. Uh, so you've made some change. Something's gone wrong. 24 times quicker to fix it. That is really seriously material and something which I think is a very, very compelling reason to adopt DevOps. But the final thing, the final part of it, uh, in terms of that sequence of numbers, is the next one, which is how long does it take someone to write code and then get it into customers' hands, get them really using it? And that's where the really radical number comes in. And people doing DevOps, they report that it's 2,500 times quicker getting those things to customers. And that is an unbelievable saving for a business. All that working capital tied up in changes that have yet to hit uh, customers. And I think those three things are the reduced risk of failure, the far faster response time to failure, and all that added value into customers' hands. Those things are really seriously valuable things for a business. And uh, 
those are really worth having. And there's a final sort of soft benefit, which is hard to sort of quantify, which is how people feel like when they're working for you. And teams which do DevOps find it easier to recruit good people, easier to keep them, easier to make the team a really successful team. And apparently those teams also have less time doing unplanned work like security issues and things like this. So there's a lot of really, really substantial benefits there. So I suspect that some of you sitting in your cubicle right now, sort of, yeah, 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 I've heard this before, Silicon Valley, blah, blah, blah. I don't know if you're me, you're imagining some guy with a ponytail. He's actually got sand in his hair because he went surfing this morning. He's wearing flip-flops. He's a bit of a dude, but he doesn't really have to care about actual customers because he's shipping something to serve pet food to Guatemala or something like that, I don't know. Uh, and that was true. That was true a few years ago, but I think that's not true anymore. I think there's... The evidence shows that this is really a mainstream thing now. 50% of the businesses doing DevOps are greater than 500 people. It's evenly placed on the Microsoft stack and the LAMP stack, 50-50 now, these businesses doing these things. This is really a mainstream thing. It's not just guys in flip-flops anymore. Uh, and of course, the way we see ourselves fitting into this, Redgate fits into this by saying, on the Microsoft stack, we're there to really help you deliver the database side of this thing. And that's our contribution to the whole world. So how do we see that uh, working? So we think this is from provisioning uh, your working environments, uh, building the database in the first place, releasing it, monitoring, and then backing it up. Many of the key things to do with uh, doing database DevOps. One of the most common challenges, as you know, is source controlling it. Uh, Six years ago, we released SQL Source Control. We were the first people, as far as we know, to ever to think about source controlling uh, a database. Uh, that's been a great success, that product. Uh, and that is uh, that is a really fantastic way to go. And if you buy into our database lifecycle management, you can even take that through to deployment. This year, we've been introducing uh, Ready Roll. That does it in a different way. Rather than being a management studio, it's a visual studio, more developer focused. And it tries to capture all the little changes as it goes through. So you've got something which is really, truly deployment ready at the moment of uh, when you want to get it ready to go. And we think that people who are really keen on automation are going to want to go that way with um, with the source controlling. Next, we've got quality of the code. Really substantial release of SQL prompt over in the last few weeks. Uh, that's got some... Uh, really big changes for people trying to get code quality, some excellent stuff around formatting, much easier to standardize across your organization. There's some really big changes there, and I'm really hoping that if you've not tried it yet, get on the latest version of SQL Prompt. I think you're going to find it's going to be our best ever. Uh, next, we've got testing. That's a really fundamental part, particularly the automated testing loops that you get with, uh, uh, data, with DevOps. We've got a few products in that space. We've got uh, SQL Test, which will also let you do unit testing against your database, and uh, Data Generator, which helps you generate realistic data. We're going to be investing quite hard, particularly in the latter of those in the next year. Uh, but the thing we're really excited about bringing to market is SQL Clone. That lets you create uh, very, very rapidly uh, versions of your database which you can, which are completely like production in every sense, but don't actually harm any of the production uh, data. And we think that's going to really change the game for database development because it's going to allow you to have for every single branch in your source code its own database to run the tests against. I think that's going to be quite a profound difference. I think it's going to change the way that most of you think about doing unit testing in your database. It'll change, really change things if you decide to implement it. Uh, so we think we're really bringing a whole load of technology to this problem that can make it really believable, real, you can deliver it. But there's a sort of final point I'd like to make, which is that uh, as you, as the guys in charge of the database, you're in a sort of much better position, really, than the application developers were when they were doing this a couple of years ago. And that's because, at least according to Dell, 60% of people doing database development are already in operations, already sitting at the heart of the organization. They're already used to the cultural sides of DevOps already because they're dealing with people in operations, people in all these different parts of the business. So rather than being over one side doing application stuff, they're already sitting at the heart of it. So we think the cultural practice with database developers and people in charge of databases is already there. It's far closer to being ready for DevOps. So now the technology is coming through. We're hopeful that you're going to look at these sessions today, be inspired, and decide to take DevOps to the database, do database DevOps, because you've got so many other things in place. We think it's ready now to go to market and actually do this thing. So I hope you have a great time today, get a bit inspired, and have a great session. Brilliant. Thank you. Goodbye.